Well, I am not super happy at the moment. I just filmed what I thought was a fantastic video for you guys. Really proud of it. So it, was a, it was a full on cut sharpening video here. I have a mirror polish Spyderco native. Just look how beautiful that edge is. It's uh, shaving sharp. Have a big bald patch on my arm right there. Right here to show you. Have a big bunch of diced up paper here. Show you guys how sharp it was. Just uh, transfer the footage to my computer. Not one bit of, one bit of audio. So I thought about what to do, and uh, we're about to see something a little bit, a little bit outrageous. I'm taking that edge back off. S30V is a beautiful steel. So I better make sure I do take that edge off. Ooh, we're reflecting light. That is one dull edge there now. Got my work cut out for me this time. Ah! Like I said, I'm not entirely happy at this point. That really, you know, it's just one of those things that it really demotivates you. Uh, I'm already a little bit late getting this video out because I've been so busy with schoolwork, and I said, you know, I just I gotta get this video done. I'm just gonna go in, fire up the camera. And just film. And uh, I did that. It turned out to be such a good video. Uh, the sharpening went beautifully. I had a nice chat to you guys. And uh, one of those things where when I finished, I was real proud of it. I said, well, that turned out great. What a great video. It should do good for views. Subscribers will really like it. And then that happens. <laughs> and it just is one of those things that leaves you with almost no motivation. I didn't know what to do. I almost said forget it and I'll upload a video next week sometime. But no. Let's go in. Let's, uh, let's persist. Try it another time. My camera is telling me right now the audio is being recorded. I'm on the 1000 grit stone. This is my Woodstock 1000 6000 combo stone. It's a great stone. It's uh, done a ton of work for me. I've put this really put the stone through the paces, and it uh, always shines, really shines. I'm not gonna lie; it hurt me a little bit to take that edge back off the knife then, especially the way I just did it. That. Uh, Definitely not my style. I'm definitely not harsh on my tools. I was very particular, very safe. I never use my knives on um, never use my knives on glass cutting boards or anything harsh. It's always just good, clean EDC work, all fair work. But I'm a little upset, and it's fine. You guys will get to see a sharpening job from an extremely blunt edge. If you could look down on what I was looking on, just saying when I put it in the light, the whole length of the edge was just uh, reflecting light, and you've seen that it was super dull. So we'll get to see how quick that 1000 can bring it back. Oh boy. It's been a tough week. A lot of stuff going on. Just finishing up a semester of school. Soon be Christmas break. Look forward to lots of content there. This knife is uh, this knife has gotten more use than any other knife in my collection. It's a, a 30B steel, made in USA, Golden, Colorado, and it is uh, it's a beauty. One of my favorite EDCs I've ever held for sure. It's just the shape, the traction, the blade steel. Blade steel is one of those things where I really don't think. A lot of people out there don't understand buying an expensive knife. They just say, you know, a hundred bucks for a knife, which 
I know to, to you knife guys, to you guys that really are into it, is it is nothing. You guys, that that's a cheap knife for you guys. But for a person that's uh, not into it, they just don't understand it. I mean, you can go to Walmart and get knives for $20. And they seem good, so why on earth would you spend $100 for a knife? And, um... Yes, it is a fair amount of money. I, I don't think you people that haven't tried knives with these steels we, or that the knife community calls super steels, S30V, the, there's all kinds of stuff. But um, you might be wondering, is there really a difference? And honestly, in my opinion, the difference is outstanding. Your knives that you're going to buy in Canadian Tire, Walmart, these places, some of your cheaper knives. Now those stores do sometimes carry some uh, some good knives and some good steels. But most of those cheaper knives are going to be uh, cheaper stainless steels, 420, 440, B or C level. Um, which are decent steels, they're okay. But... Uh, when you switch to something like this, an S30V and like I said S30B is uh, is not the top of the line it was at one point but it's not right at the moment when you switch to these level of steels there really is a superb noticeable level of performance these steels are just tough they're wear resistant they're they're just so good this S30V here will needs to be sharpened with the same amount of use probably three times less often than say VG10 and I don't think that's an exaggeration you can write down in the comments if you agree with me I'd like to know some of you guys that have tested different steels I'd say three times less for the S30V compared to VG10 and that's substantial in my opinion, it's just uh, it's just some good steel. That being said, it also takes a lot more time on the stone. You notice it's uh, taking me a little while here, and because it was so dull, I'm looking now for a few of those dull spots, making sure I get rid of those, making sure we're nice and sharp evenly along. Because usually my knives don't get anywhere near as dull as I just made this one. Just because I like a nice crispy sharp edge. It's nice to show people. It's nice for performance. I don't want to get caught with a poorly sharpened edge. When here I am doing instructional videos and telling people how important it is to practice your skills. Speaking of practicing your skills, uh, just wanted to mention uh, Wrangler Star recently did a video a little while ago now uh, he had a subscriber send him a guided knife sharpener and if anyone doesn't know uh, Wrangler Star is my favorite youtuber I just love his content love his channel I love his what he stands for his beliefs we we share a lot of the same beliefs and I just think he's such a great guy great gentleman good character I just I think he has a good head on his shoulders but uh, he recently got this guided sharpener sent to him and uh, I can't remember what it's called now I believe it's a German system and he he raves on about this system you know and his example is you know when you're your hand sharpening you, you never get perfect work done and, and you can never really get the perfect edge and you always end up messing up your edge and and a, and a lot of things like this and I can't help but think that that goes against a lot of what he's preached on his channel all along he's kind of spent a lot of time preaching about getting back to the old ways and and sort of talking about you know how young men or the young generation don't doesn't have any real skills anymore and, and I think hand sharpening is one of those things that we should just have the skills. 
it's not, you don't have, sorry, let me rephrase. If you're trying to push the lifestyle that Wrangler Star is, I feel like hand sharpening is one of those just basic principles. You shouldn't need a big guided system. In one of his most recent videos, he uh, he's working on one of the tables he's doing, and uh, he sharpens. He he pulls out one of his chisels, and he, he just said he he sharpens it on his uh, he sharpens it on his guided system. And he made the comment that uh, oh, it went something like. Sorry, I'm losing train of thought. The comment went something like, his work wasn't perfect yet. He he justified, he said, I, I use the system because, you know, my hand skills are not perfect yet, and they're not quite as developed as they should be, so, so he used the sharpener. But I, I couldn't help but think, if you use that sharpener, the guided system, your hand skills are never going to get where they should be. Until you have to rely on hand skills, you'll never have the skills you need. Because, like I said, you'll just rely on that every time. Myself, I definitely don't have it all put together. I'm not the best. I don't want, don't want to claim. So please don't comment down below. You think you're the best. Far from it. But, whetstones are all I use. Kind of all I have. So... Uh, I can't afford one of those big expensive sharpeners and even if I could I, and I, I won't say they're not cool they're cool and I can't compete with how strict the tolerances of bevels that those machines can put on blades but I don't think that's needed and it's not not really my style I take pride in having the hand skills to be able to just freehand this this knife here that was so dull that I just completely wrecked the edge on. You can see by how long I just scrubbed on that 1000 grit stone. It really took a while to bring it back and it's just back to the point now where it's a nice keen edge again. I don't think there's any reflection there. It doesn't appear to be. I take pride in being able to do that in those skills. And uh, yeah. I, I guess I'm just mentioning it's a little shout out for Wrangler Star like he needs it with his following but it's also I just kind of found it funny that he would be advocating that system so much when so much time has been spent on his channel talking about how we need to get back to building those old skills and getting away from machines doing everything by machines and everything such a fast pace and one of those things I don't like about those big systems is that they're just really big. You need a big bench top area to set it up. It's not really portable. When I uh, I often travel home to my hometown, and uh, every time I never leave without my stone. I throw this one little stone in uh, in a bag or my little tool kit or or something like that, and uh, and it comes with me. Then I sharpen kitchen knives out there for my mom, or uh, sharpen my dad's knife for him, or keep my own tools sharp if I get out for a couple outings that weekend. I just bring my tools, so with a system like that, you can't do that. I could bring this, I could pack this in the woods with me if I was going on, say, a couple day trip. And if you're always used to those systems, those god of systems, where does that leave you when you are in the woods and all you've got is a stone. You're definitely not going to have the skills built up that allows you to uh, to just freehand a, a nice sharp edge back on the knife. Long story short, rant over, I don't agree really with using those guided systems. Unless you're someone that needs really high production, need perfect edges really fast without even thinking about it. And you're not going to transport your system you're ever going to do any work for anyone else or, or go anywhere with it. Build your freehand skills. Get yourself a nice stone. This wood stock here is a great, great option. Such a good stone. 
build those hand skills, you'll be really glad you did. It's feeling like to me that we're pretty well there on edge. I think we're polished. It feels like uh, I stated in the last video, the one that I just did and didn't have any audio for, my fingertips are really insensitive this evening for some strange reason. It's almost like I can't feel the edge. I usually do the three finger sharpness test, but it's really weird. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I'm not too particular with this. This native gets more use than any knife in my system. It's a good blade. Guys, I just feel a little bit bad. Just again, I'm not trying to uh, discredit Wrangler Star at all. I just wanted to make a simple point about about the reason why I and so many others stick to whetstone. Very important to build those skills, and I just was using Wrangler Star as an example of that it's easy to try to justify getting out of building those skills because one of those systems is easy easy not to have to think about it but uh, I definitely definitely would rather have the skills hopefully this knife came back it's really it's been more work than uh, than a normal sharpening that will likely be the last time I ever take an edge off like that this is a moment of truth let's bring in some light Shaving sharp. Practice your craft. Practice your skills. Look at that edge back there now. You guys can do it. There are tons of instructional videos out there. I'm not the only guy. I'm not trying to pretend. Let's give you a little paper test. There we go. That's how it's done. Hit the like button down below, please. Comment on my channel. I love reading the comments. Subscribe. The button on your screen there now. Please subscribe. Check out some of my other videos. I'll probably have them there somewhere. Spyderco Native full length uncut sharpening for the second time in one hour. Hope you enjoyed it, guys. Stay tuned for some more videos coming up.